first time I saw her, I just knew. She wasn't even my type. She had green eyes that scared me. Her skin was golden caramel. The New York summer sun kissed it so gently that she hummed so sweetly when she walked by. The first time we spoke, we were two strangers with the hope of summer affection. We were open to the possibilities of it. Love wrapped its arms around us as fat Cupid would, and we stayed in its warm embrace. The first time we kissed, I was in her friend's dress. She was doing my makeup. We smiled at the absurdity of it all. She was committed to making me look as ridiculous as possible. Ten minutes turned into an hour of light-hearted conversations about how the blusher brings out my tone to childhood love stories. Our first loves. Kiss. She asked why I stare at her eyes the way that I did. I told her. They scare me. You for real? Her tone was sympathetic. Like this wasn't the first time someone said that to her. She tried to look at me more apologetically. She couldn't. I guess she couldn't help it. And I didn't want her to. Finally, she gave me a wig to wear and I was transformed into an awful sight. She laughed. I didn't. She laughed some more. I towered over her in my surrogate hill. We stared at this bizarre mirage that formed in the mirror in front of us. I was a contradiction to her. My new image clashed with the subtleties of her beauty. Her hair curled in ways my insides did when I thought about her. She was a deep beauty. Like being heavily engrossed in a fictional work you created where everything made sense, everything was as you wanted it to be. She helped me to the door and we stood there. Time yielded to this moment. We stood there for at least five more minutes without saying a word, without doing a thing. We just stood. It was like we both needed that moment to prepare us for the next stage of our lives. I kissed her. She kissed me. Her lips trembled. Her tongue was the taste of forgotten fruits, the taste of sweet, rotten nectar you'd find deep in summer seasons. We kissed. She pulled herself out in a way only a strong woman knew how and looked at me and smiled. I loved her right away. I had no choice. We loved like old couples would. We had this intrinsic bond that made me question whether my life before actually existed. I convinced myself I was in a lull. I was living in her womb. She gave birth to me. She was convinced too. She feared having children. She didn't want to share her body with nothing else but me. The space within her was sacred. She knew I was the only one who wanted to worship it. So I prayed every night to her that we'd stay forever in our state of unconsciousness. Nothing else mattered, not even the steady pattern of raindrops on the window pane of our winter apartment. We'd lie in a state of transfix. We lay like corpses mellow from the numbness of body parts appearing and disappearing the night before. I'd tell her how the only thing that would make this moment perfect 
was if we both died right where we were. You're crazy. Then her mind would explore the idea. We're crazy. I smiled because she got it, that crazy was what we had. I didn't want anything about us to make sense. I didn't want our love to be consented to. We existed in ourselves. It was all we needed. I remembered nights we'd stay in each other's embrace. Conversations about accents and how funny it was to her when I said, water. It made her smile. I'd laugh at the irony, watch her mouth as I saw words vividly roll off her tongue. The way she spoke would reveal how she grew up in Philly, and her adult days in New York. Her Puerto Rican undertones will trail slowly behind whatever she said. They appeared as quickly as they disappeared dancing sinuously on smoke clouds that filled the room. Making love was like a meditation. We'd sink into each other and our bodies became mass. Like an atomic equation, no formula ever written was as true as us. And we knew that. It was clear in our arrogance in bed. After we were done, she would roll an L, and I'd wait and write some poetry. I'd say how one day she would read whatever it was I was writing when we're no longer together, and she'd touch herself. She'd raise an eyebrow. But never distracted from whatever she was rolling. She loved to smoke more than she loved me sometimes. I'd write sweet poetry about how I was the love affair. I'd say things like, she was married to this drug and I had no choice but to adore her. I was before her in the evolution of passing death so I longed to feel her lips like the joint she was rolling did. Feel her roll me gently around her fingers. I'd exist in the billowing of the smoke lines. They would carry me across shores so I can visit her ancestral homeland and when all the smoke had disappeared, she'd say, Fuck out of here. I'd laugh. Why do you always have to be such a defeatist about us? like you think breaking up is what makes this a relationship. <laughs>